Stewardship Sunday is upon us, and I imagine that this might induce some groaning or perhaps even some wincing in some of us. A lot of us find it uncomfortable to talk about money. Perhaps we were raised to believe that it's impolite to talk about money in public. Maybe we are a little squeamish at the intersection of money and spirituality, and possibly due to scandals in certain other quarters of other religious traditions, or possibly due to our tendency to divide things like church into a category called sacred, and things like money into a category called profane, <coughs> artificial categories. But be that as it may, stewardship season, which is, as you know by now, what we call the time of year when we pledge financial contributions to the church, is necessary. But more than that, there is a spiritual task at hand here that I think is often overlooked. Our theme this year is, From This We Live. It's taken from the hymn that we are using as our reflection hymn and we sung earlier. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. That really does sum up what it means to be a part of a beloved community, especially during stewardship, stewardship season. I will eventually be able to say that, don't worry. <laughs> Each of us receives such a benefit from being a part of the church, and now the time has come for us to give in return. And it is from this we live. But let's take a step back. We have heard some theories on why it's called stewardship. And we've heard some ideas of what a steward is. We're going to hear just a few more. If nothing else today, you will be able to define steward by the time you're in the church. <laughs> a steward is one who is tasked with the caretaking of an institution. So we are, in every sense, the stewards of this congregation. There is no presbytery, no synod, no diocese upon which we depend for financial support. So on one hand, this gives us awesome power and freedom to be who we are as a congregation. We can forge our own opinions and policies in faithful response to our Unitarian Universalist principles and our covenants. But on the other hand, it means that we are solely responsible for our own financial well-being. Everything that we have is because of the people who are gathered in this room and those who have come before us. This is something of which we can feel proud, and it is a serious responsibility. Only we are able to create and take care of this beloved community. It's very literally of us and through us that this community exists. And it can seem daunting, <coughs> but I think, too, that it's really beautiful. We are this beloved community, and we are rooted in our own power to guide ourselves and to make our own choices. With this freedom comes great responsibility to care for ourselves. Stewardship is congregational self-care. Making a financial contribution to BUC is one very important way of expressing love and care of this community. In fact, I would say it's the most foundational way that we express love and care for this community. I'm gonna take a step back now and describe how pledging works, assuming that we might have some new people in our midst who are learning about this for the first time. There might be some people who are seriously confused about what, what we're doing here. <laughs> Every spring, we ask people to make a pledge of how much financial support they plan to give the church in the following fiscal year. So in March, or very early April of this year, you will make a pledge of a certain financial amount that we will use from July 2019 through June 2020. We use that pledge amount to build our budget, and we depend on you to follow through with the financial support that you promised in your pledge. Now, of course, financial circumstances can change, and if that happens, we ask that you contact the office and let us know so that we can adjust our spending accordingly. Our ability to create a realistic budget depends on your budget, and our ability to operate within that budget throughout the year depends on you honoring your pledge. We also have several important fundraisers that we depend on. That includes Rummage and the biannual talent and service auction. We build an estimate of how much revenue we expect these fundraisers to raise into the budget. So for next year, we're hoping to raise $25,000 from rummage and $21,000 from auction. We also include an estimate of rental revenue. Next year's income from revenue, next year's revenue from rentals is anticipated to be around 
$111,850. There are a few other sources of income as well, smaller things, but these are the additional efforts that the church staff, the board of trustees, and dedicated church members make to raise money for the life of the congregation. Altogether, that's about 30% of our budget. The remaining amount, $557,500, $557,500, is expected to come from pledges. That's our stewardship goal this year. Now, the breakdown of these sources of revenue varies across Unitarian Universalist congregations, <coughs> but not by much. Pledging is always the number one source of income. Pledging is how we and other Unitarian Universalist churches do business. Financially supporting the church is part of what it is to be a faithful Unitarian Universalist. <coughs> Putting aside the obligation to pledge and to honor pledges, there are many other reasons to give. Our worship theme this month is reverence. Our annual stewardship campaign is part of how we show reverence for this community, and the sacred bonds that we share. By pledging and later honoring our pledge, we become stewards of this community. We don't call the fundraising stewardship as some sort of cheeky euphemism or because we like vaguely religious language. We call it stewardship because your financial contributions are what it takes to make church happen. Anything that is important to you about our congregation is supported by the stewardship of the people sitting next to you this morning. When we financially support the ends of this worshiping community, we become the means through which they are met. A steward is a caretaker, the keeper of a promise that lies at the heart of an institution. At BUC, that promise is an inclusive, warm, loving community that welcomes all people of goodwill. This is a place where we walk where we belong, if not in spite of, but because of our differences. BUC is a place of refuge from the storms that buffet our lives. It is a place where we can bring our whole selves and be loved. When we support those endeavors financially, we take on a new level of ownership over them. We become the reason why this support and this shelter exists in a very real sense. We become the shelter of this community for another BUC year, and we become that for us. That is the philanthropic kinship that Mark Ewart spoke of in our second reading. And there is yet another piece to this, which is the practice of generosity and how that changes us as individuals. Our lives are full of commercial exchanges. We have come to expect that when we spend money, we will receive something in exchange that is quantifiably the same. We expect to get what we paid for. But in the practice of generosity, we let go of that commerce approach to exchange, and we give because it feels good, rather than because we expect to get something in return. The erotic thing is that when you give out of generosity, we get more than we could have bargained for. By giving to BUC, you support not just the parts of the congregation that you actively participate in, but the congregation as a whole. Your contribution allows a young person to go to Boston to trace back our historic roots. It pays for training for a pastoral care associate who will visit somebody in the hospital. It pays for sheet music for the choir. Your contribution makes what you love about church possible, but it also makes what someone else loves about church possible. In this way, our generosity brings us together as a community. It is impossible for any one of us to keep the UC's budget running by ourselves. We can only do this by working together. The act of generosity during a stewardship campaign is a reinforcement of our seventh principle, the universal web of life of which we are all a part. That principle is often cited for environmental justice causes, but it applies here too to the holy connections that we share with one another in the shelter of these walls. Our contributions spread out through the network of programming and touch the lives of people in this congregation <coughs> that we may know only in passing. Each of us has cause to be grateful for the others who have made our favorite BUC program possible. 
None of our programs exist outside the web. Even if they are self-supporting for program expenses, they still depend on facilities usage, like having the lights on, having Jason here to help get the table set up. And that is paid for primarily through pledge dollars. So this is getting a little esoteric for you. Remember that the act of generosity has personal benefits. Study after study has shown that giving leads to happiness. One of the most often cited of these studies was conducted jointly by Harvard Business School and the University of British Columbia in 2008. They found that giving made people happier in three arenas. One was charitable contributions, the second was profit sharing, and the third was direct contribution. I find the third the most fascinating. What they did was they gave students envelopes containing $5 or $20, and they told the students they could spend the money however they wanted on themselves or others that they had to spend it that day. And at the end of the day, the students that had spent money on themselves reported no change in happiness, but those who had spent it on others were quantifiably happier. It didn't matter if they'd given away $5 or $20, they were happier. In his work on generosity, Mark Ewart finds that generosity is contagious. That's part of why we give as a community together at the same time. Practically speaking, we need to give pledges at the same time so that we can build our budget. But spiritually, there is something about giving together in a season of generosity that inspires us to give more and to feel more gratitude. And again, generosity equals happiness. I know that the idea of the annual budget process can engender fear in some of us. I spent many years working in the nonprofit sector. I once worked at a nonprofit where we were not allowed to buy post it notes because they were considered frivolous. <laughs> Every year, budget time would come around and we'd wonder what we'd have to live without. They're taking away our post it notes. What's next? Our pencils? <laughs> Calculators? <laughs> it was tough. But working on a budget doesn't have to be that way. There's no requirement that we have to work from a scarcity paradigm when we're putting together a budget. We have to be realistic, but we also need to leave room for our hopes and our dreams. By working together to fund our budget, we come closer together as a worshiping community. Our generosity is contagious and it strengthens the bonds of this community. We do all through that, all of that, through the making and the honoring of pledges. Over the next several weeks, you'll hear more about stewardship through testimonials of some of our members. I think the theme this year is who has to drive the furthest. <laughs> I love that. I can't wait to hear what people drive so far to come to this community. I think it'll be really enlightening. Please know how much I support the efforts of our stewardship committee to ensure the financial health of our beloved community for another year to come. I encourage you to attend the gatherings that Wally and Sora mentioned earlier and that are described in your newsletter. What a beautiful way to share what you love about BUC and to hear how this community has touched the lives of others. During this time of stewardship, may each of us feel called to be caretakers of this beloved community, the keepers of its promise, and stewards of BUC. May it be so. Amen and blessings.